morning again. I do hope the past few days provided a nice break between wrapping up our winter term on Saturday morning and returning to more routine classes with the second semester set to begin when we walk out the doors in just a little while. I'm not sure how all of you feel about winter, but I will say that I get a bit less patient with it every year. Dark days, colder temperatures, snow, ice, wind, and this year's troubling trend, really cold and heavy rain. It can feel pretty bleak. I also think you could make an argument that this particular point in the winter is the most challenging point in our school year. The stretch between Thanksgiving and winter break is pretty quick and not really winter just yet. We come back from winter break to winter term and find ourselves excited about the change of pace and the experiences we are about to have. Then winter term ends and we have a nice long weekend to enjoy as we turn our attention to preparing for the balance of the year. Until today, our calendar and how we are engaged with one another does a pretty good job going toe to toe and standing up to winter. Today, well today's a slightly different story. We still have eight days to go in January, followed by 29 days in February this year, and then six more in March before spring break finally arrives six weeks from now. We'll have to deal with more darkness, more cold, more snow, more ice, more wind, and maybe even more really cold and heavy rain. It can be a grim thought when you take it all in at once. So if you happen to be feeling some version of what I feel from time to time in the winter and have felt on this day at points in my life, I'm here to help. I have three thoughts I want to share today that I hope will help us. First, I want to take a few minutes to thank those who made winter term such a success. A reminder of what an amazing community we are all a part of, capable of overcoming even the most depressing really cold and heavy rain. Second, as many of you will attest, there are all kinds of virtues to the six weeks of winter that still lie ahead. And I want to do my best to highlight and maybe even get you excited for some of what winter has to offer. Third, today marks the beginning of the final Brooks School semester for the class of 2024. As we sit here in Ashburn Chapel this morning, they are just 124 days away from prize day. To give this impressive group some food for thought, on how to finish well over the 17 weeks and five days that remain in their Brooks School careers is my hope. Here goes. I love winter term and want to start by thanking my terrific group of 13 students who did a great job exploring American politics with Mr. Waters and me. As much as I enjoy the subject matter, I mostly enjoy the concentrated time we have together and the opportunity that provides to know one another better than we did when the course started. I'm grateful to everyone in our group for making the experience so fun. I'm grateful for the incredible work that Ms. McDonough did in ways that stretch well beyond these three weeks and are largely unseen. Course descriptions and assignments, scheduling, funding, day and overnight trips, special meals, last minute changes, all of it comes to be because Ms. McDonough pays attention to every last detail and ensures we are positioned to provide the experiences we do. We are very lucky to have her running this part of our year. I'm grateful to Ms. McKenzie and the scores of colleagues she worked with on evening offerings, trips here and there when weather allowed, and the overall scheduling she was engaged in all along the way here too. Lucky to have her doing such great work. I want to thank Reverend Afori for coordinating and organizing such a meaningful and memorable interfaith service in memory of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I do not recall anything like it over the years I've been at Brooks and all of us who were able to attend that morning are better for the experience. I want to thank the faculty for coming up with such an impressive array of courses and experiences that evolve in exciting ways every year. 
our dining hall staff for working with a different pace and lots of particular food needs. And I want to thank all of you for jumping into experiences that were new, giving to them in ways that enhanced the experience for others, and I hope drawing from them in ways that will resonate. All of us make winter term work, and this underlines for me what an amazing group of people we all share the school with, a group entirely capable of conquering and thriving in the winter stretch that remains. While it might not be entirely accurate, I've always thought about this day as the halfway point of winter. Three weeks in December, three weeks of winter term, six weeks to go. So for people like me, who are having a harder time than some at seeing the virtues of winter when we are right in the middle of it, here is some of what gives me, and perhaps you, hope for the stretch ahead. While winter dew points are generally far too low, they are still much better than those awful hot and sticky days in the summer. Just bring some lip balm wherever you go and all will be well. There are no bugs in winter. Just think about those summer and fall days when mosquitoes are swarming all around you, or bees are chasing you, or ticks are ruining everything, and enjoy the bug-free experience we can count on for these next six weeks. There's not a speck of pollen to contend with anywhere. A day will come at some point in the spring when the campus will be blanketed in a yellow haze. Half of us will be sneezing with runny noses and our eyes will be itchy. No such concern between now and March 6th. Temperatures are officially on the rise in North Andover over the next six weeks from an average high of 35 degrees in January to 38 degrees in February to a balmy 46 degrees in March. Still not great, but better than the decline we have been in until now. Today, sunrise was at 7.06 a.m. and sunset will be at 4.46 p.m. One week from today, just one week, we will have 19 more minutes of daylight. By the end of February, you can add 78 additional minutes to those 19, and we'll be well on our way to longer and brighter days, always good for the soul and spirit. And finally, there is so much to see and do between now and spring break. New beginnings and opportunities in your classes, dominating at the Model UN conference, dazzling with the winter play, celebrating the Lunar New Year, learning through Black History Month, taking in Lehman Arts Center exhibits, six form chapel talks beginning, and cheering on our athletic teams as they seek to earn opportunities to finish well and play beyond the regular season. There might even be a head of school holiday in there somewhere. That's good. So, if like me, you feel the weight of winter when contemplating these next six weeks all at once, take heart. We have a lot to be excited about. Finally, this is it for the class of 2024. 124 days to go. And while they didn't ask, I want to offer a bit of advice aimed at helping them get all they can out of the time that remains. I'm going to predict with great confidence that a time will come in all 88 of your lives when you will come back to Brooks in the future and you will be here with someone who has never been here before and you will walk the campus and see it from a very different perspective. And that someone will say to you in utter amazement, you went to high school here? Don't miss what this place looks like on a bright morning after a fresh snowfall. Don't miss what this place looks like when spring begins to come and the countless flowering trees and landscape come to life. Don't walk across that stage on May 27th without having walked the campus lots of time between now and then, around the boathouse, along the fire trail, slowly, with friends, by yourself, however you want to do it. Just do it. Don't get, do get up to take in a sunrise on a clear day when the sky lights up in the east. Do the same sitting in the field when the sun sets on a similar day. Do take time to connect with the place and connect with one another. Be intentional about thanking a teacher or coach or advisor or dormitory parent or nurse 
or two of them or three of them or four of them who reached you in a way that holds. Go out of your way to do this as gratitude unexpressed is not gratitude at all. Do the same with a younger student or two or three because it will matter to them more than you can know. Thank your parents and guardians for letting you have this experience. Thank the folks in the dining hall who take such good care of us morning, noon, and night. Thank the facilities team who take such beautiful care of the spaces we are so privileged to enjoy in and out of doors. Thank one another, those you know well, and especially those you don't. You have had this experience together, and none of us make it very far on our own. Get started now on making sure you don't leave any words of gratitude left unsaid. You'll have a better winter and finish to the year if you do. I promise. So when I think about six more weeks of winter and the way it can wear me down, I pivot to members of this community who lift me all the time through their unwavering commitment to what they do so well. I pivot to winter's many virtues and the rich array of talents that will be on display for all of us to enjoy and find inspiration in. I pivot to the class of 2024 and the sense of urgency I feel in wanting the group to take it all in because on May 28th, it won't ever be the same again. I pivot to the deep gratitude and privilege I feel to lead this school and all who are a part of it. Here's to a great six weeks of winter. Have a terrific start to the second semester. Thank you.